So recently I found myself in the Solaris Death Clash, and I wanted to go over a situation that I encountered, which may have quite a significant impact on your play style and decision making, because this one in particular I felt was very, very enlightening when it comes to the concept of tactical warfare. A lot of people in, uh, that pick up Solaris are here for the massive fleet battles, the building of empires, throwing gigantic battleship, fl uh, battleship fleets at each other and watching the carnage unfold. I, however, however, am from a different category. I like strategic warfare and also tactical warfare. Now let's take a look at the situation that we have at the moment. The family, as well as the Church of Chains, has declared war on the Omni Computer Codex, the Omni Horse Codex, and the FNG, which is two alliance wars happening in parallel. There's also the contingency, they don't cause too many problems. However, I do know that there is a giant fleet sitting inside of the family, uh, which are going to be on their way to the Omni Computer Codex. So let's forward things a little bit and see where we end up. First of all, uh, you may notice that we have a uh, missing war goal. Now, a missing war goal in this particular case, we've got the ability to humiliate if we want to. However, we could also uh, go and manage ourselves some claims. But a good thing here is, is that we can go and actually get a whole bunch of claims on this empire over here and get a whole bunch of good stuff, which is exactly what we want. And the main problem here is... There are no gateways anywhere, and this is also going to tie into our strategy very shortly. But just for the sake of it, uh, let's claim uh, this place, this place, this place, just to carve out a little sector. Let's make that claim and make a push for it, and then uh, humiliate, and then uh, go from there on. I don't think we can do any conquers at the moment because we don't have any claims, apparently, according to the game. If we open it up again, yeah, we go for humiliate, which means that we'll get a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway... With all that stuff settled, uh, their attack force will most likely come in. And we have a problem on our hands. And that is the following. If we look at our fleet here, uh, especially uh, these battleship fleets uh, with a bunch of corvettes just to stay on standby, you'll see this is very much focused on a shield strategy with a lot of kinetic weapons. This is obviously a problem because the family is going to come in with a type of fleet that is perfectly specced against us. Let's go and quickly observe and see what they have. And then I will illustrate to you the strategy that we have got on us as well. So we've got the homeboys, for instance. They're moving towards the uh, system over here. They're not doing all that much. They're standing by. But normally what they would do, they will try to push in towards territory here and take that. When we were playing the game, we made an observation very early on, and that is that their battleships, at least some of them, are only running Hyperdrive 3, with a mixture of other things thrown in as well. Why is this a problem for them? Well, if you look, for instance, on their Tough Guy fleet, you will see that they have got jump drives. The lack of jump drives on a lot of their ships are going to cause serious problems for their fleets. In addition, uh, another thing that they got going for themselves here is that they've completely specced their fleet against shield damage. Which means that they will do a lot of damage to our uh, to our fleet as uh, they try to come in. Which is obviously a problem. We don't really want to do that. So we want to avoid make, uh, we want to avoid them attacking us. So what are you going to do here? Well, we are going to do the following. We're going to go to our fleet manager. And we're going to go toward this new fleet that I've set up, which I also did in the game. I'm quickly going to reinforce them. Force it. And what is this going to build? This is going to build a mixture of small hyper shields as well as uh, Neutronian armor. We actually maybe maybe we can cancel some of this stuff actually uh, because we want to make sure that we actually build the right ship type. And considering they are going full anti shield, it may be a good idea just to wow. That is a lot of corvettes that I'm just crapping off the front line here. That is a lot. Wow, that's... Okay, well, we'll just go with a mixture here instead. But as you can see, uh, shields, etc. Uh, being focused on, which is fine. Uh, we can do all that stuff, so we can actually just retrofit them quickly and just uh, reinforce. Good, so now we are basically crapping out about 200 Corvettes off the factory line. While at the same time, we can start looking at our battleship fleet 
and actually do a little bit more flexibility on here by adding some more Neutronian armor, armor in the lows. I know the enemy has got a mixture of stuff in the highs, so we can just upgrade this and then make sure that our main capital fleet, which is currently moving back here, at about a fleet power of about 800,000, is going to sit in a position of control. Why do we not want to send this fleet in to fight? Because we outnumber the enemy by a significant margin. So, for instance, we've got some pirate hunters over here that have decided to move in. That's probably not the best idea there, AI. But if we look at the family, for instance, they are currently inferior. So why exactly have I decided to do this particular thing? Well, as I mentioned, and let's uh, quickly highlight this, uh, a lot of fleet power in the game is not necessarily defined by how many battleships you can throw into a fight just because you have the guns for it doesn't necessarily mean that your fight will be optimized and your losses will not be enormous instead however what we're going to be doing is we're going to be abusing a particular approach and that approach is is that we are going to be throwing a ton and ton of corvettes behind enemy lines supported by transport ships why transport ships you may ask well, transport ships in general are actually incredibly powerful uh, when it comes to being incredibly annoying behind enemy lines. I will illustrate that as such very shortly as I uh, just quickly merge this fleet together as well. So as our Corvette fleet is getting into a new position and all of our uh, Corvettes are coming off the factory lines here, we want to make sure that uh, these guys are actually moving all the way around. It's about 78,000 fleet power. It may be valuable to actually change some of our policies here in terms of our war doctrine uh, of our war doctrines here. Hit and run is actually quite good. Defense in depth is also quite good. No retreat. The ship fire rate plus 33 percent cannot be underestimated it is exceptionally good. But we want to go for a rapid deployment. Why? Because we want to be fast and we want to have a lot of firepower on the field very friggin quickly. Construction complete. So, get a little bit of technology here. It's all fine. The war is continuing. They're sending a small fleet in at the moment. There's this battleship fleet. It's got a couple of destroyers in here. It's not all that bad. Oh, look, they even have a couple of Nomad cruisers in there. Very interesting. But overall, uh, it's all hyperdrive technology. And this is a serious problem for them. And I will shortly illustrate why this is the case. So let's take a look here. These are where is our new Corvette fleet that is just coming off the factory line here? So our Corvette fleet, let's move them over here towards this system, and then I will illustrate why this is such a powerful thing to do. So in the meantime, all of the other Corvettes are coming in as well. They're reinforcing back towards uh, horse labs and all that and making sure that uh, all the support is there as well whilst at the same time we are reinforcing as many armies as we can onto our main fleet here maybe actually a good idea just to give this a little split because 3k is quite a lot so let's quickly attach a general to that as well because we want to make sure that uh, we can occupy enemy planets very efficiently and we're just going to move this fleet down here and we're going to move uh, this fleet down here so our omni horse codex swarm as i would like to call it is now down in here what are we going to do with it well we are going to do something very simple with it. we are going to jump into the holden system if possible so we're going to go and jump in here and go behind enemy lines why are we going to go behind enemy lines well the main reason for that is is because well if we take a look at this capital system here it's generating 729 energy that is a rather significant amount that we want to take out of the economy because the large fleet that they have is probably difficult to maintain with the sheer amount of numbers that they're trying to field which is something that we want to keep in mind so the second task force i think it's which one is it called the uh, misara task force yeah we now have over a hundred corvettes that are coming in here right now and we will immediately do the same that we've done before so we want to go down to our military here that's so that's the misara force and move them to this position because uh, this area right here is going to be very important for our tactical situation 
Our goal here is not so much to have a grand firefight in the stars, no, our objective here is, is to cripple the enemy so completely that they're not able to do anything with their main fleet. Sure, they can take these systems, no problem. They can move in here, I don't have an issue with that. What I'm more interested in is, is crippling their economy by taking their, re their centers of production. And then we'll move in the main fleet when they are unable to support their economy and are basically forced back to liberate their own worlds. And that right there is uh, usually a good way of dealing with these sort of things. So let's do a casual jump here into Holden. We will uh, bring one of our transport fleets in as well. We will very quickly bounce in here. Now all their fleets are on the front lines. And there should not be a lot here back uh, to deal with. There we go. So I see here I now have uh, sensor range. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to beeline straight for their homeworld. Their homeworld is of course the most important target. Because this is usually, especially for these tall centralized empires, the main passive. point of... Um, well, uh, defense, let's put it that way. And it, especially with, with these corvettes, especially when the enemy is focusing mostly on a battleship-based workflow, it means that we can basically rush them incredibly fast. And in the meantime, we are also waiting for our secondary fleet to just reinforce a little bit, making sure that we have more than enough fleet power to do more stuff here. There we go. So all our corvettes are just moving in. We're just building more and more and more of them. Whilst our secondary transport fleet is just on standby. Now the real question here is, what are these guys going to throw at us? Because I know that there is a fairly large station in here. This station is 29. It's relatively good, but do we want to do something with it? Well, there is also this particular target over here that I am very interested in because I want to invade this planet as soon as I can. Because 400 trade value is not something to scoff at. We want to occupy all their planets and then leave the armies there. Why do we want to leave the armies there? Because then they become pretty much impossible to dislodge. Secondary fleet is on standby. We jump it in. Same system. We'll do the same thing with our... Uh, support fleet, we jump her in, and we move on with our lives. Now we've got two corvette fleets behind enemy lives. The enemy has no jump drives to quickly reinforce, and we are basically running around causing hell. At the same time, we can use our resources that we have gotten to reinforce our fleets and refit them as fast as we can. And that right there is something that we want to do very very quickly we want to make sure that we've got enough armor and enough shields in our lows because previously we did not have those but in the meantime whilst we have got all of our corvettes behind enemy lines it means that they have nothing that they can really do so now our forces are on the ground here they are invading let's make sure that these guys and these guys are following each other and then move over towards the cap enemy capital system whilst their main fleets are stuck on the front line being completely slogged down in the station systems with massive defensive positions and that right there is basically a good approach of dealing with these sort of situations you don't always have to slam a gigantic fleet into the face of destruction it's usually a it's, it's a it's an interesting way of doing things sure it, it works but sometimes when you're up against overwhelming odds and you've got all of these massive fleets flying around and you're also in a situation where the enemy could very quickly uh, destroy everything you have and then going with corvettes with very long uh, up fire very long targeting ranges as well as high evasion being able to dodge any sort of firepower that is in this system and just roll over the enemy Round occupy their planets now, at the main time, same time, it looks like we've got our occupation done. We're just going to land this entire force. Actually, yeah, we may actually uh, we may actually split this because then the enemy will need to uh, send an even large, uh, still a reasonably large force to liberate this planet. But we've occupied this planet, whilst at the same time basically stopping them from being able to do anything. So now all of our troops are on the ground here. Hang one, two, three. Well, they should be there very shortly. But they're going to be on the ground there, and they're going to be incredibly difficult to dislodge. 
uh, they're going to need to do a heavy bombardment of any sort of um, any sort of planetary objectives in order to dislodge that uh, that massive army that's on the ground there. In the meantime, we have now taken the enemy capital system and their capital world is open for business. Whilst at the same time, we're still running around with our two corvette fleets behind the front lines. And at this point, there is really nothing that the enemy can do. They are sitting here with a capital fleet over there. We can just casually move our corvette fleet to uh, destroy that. We can take a look around. Is there any interesting targets like uh, Nova Porcia? It's got 534 trade value. We've basically taken a thousand away from them already. And in this case as well, 201. Do we want to occupy that? Hell yes, we want to occupy that. Can the enemy counter this? No, not in any way, shape, or form. Because their fleet is just not set up for it. They could chase, sure. They could easily chase. But they would, be, would they be able to liberate, liberate the planet at the same time? Not really. Uh, this is basically the hilarity. Yeah, exactly. They only have defensive forces here and a million invasion forces are just coming down on this planet trying to uh, well take 729 economy power off the map and that's why you should always make sure that you're okay well they're jumping in that's interesting that's why you should always make sure that you're capable of countering any, any sort of enemy uh enemy enemy objectives Mainly because there is a bunch of battleships in here, there's a bunch of corvettes in here. Sure, they've managed to reinforce, but it's already too late. Because their weapon systems are no longer relevant to what we are doing. Now the main problem here is, is that we may lose our uh, occupation fleet, but they don't have any armies to do anything with. So it's not the end of the world. What are they going to do? Nothing. That's what they're going to do. Oh, wow, we actually managed to uh, take this citadel successful. incredibly quickly. And then we just move the fleet back and then go in. At this point, they are going to be bleeding completely dry. So let's see if we can actually uh, liberate this planet at some point. There we go. 151 remaining. We are probably going to lose the army that's in here. But we, there's no tick box, sadly, that can basically say, hey, leave the army on the ground here. Because leaving the army on the ground is actually incredibly powerful if you know what you're doing. Oh, they have Max should jump out. So that sucks for them because uh, their front line is now crippled. And considering... Oh, there, they're trying to bring in some armies. That is actually adorable. But yeah, considering they have a mixture of battleships together with corvettes, it means that they will never move faster than they can. I'll sell Starbase. Wow, okay. Well, that's just going to flip. And we'll just land our troops here. Nothing they can do about it. We're just going to casually park all of our troops on this on this planet. And in the meantime, our corvettes are just chasing the enemy down because they are incredibly slow with their battleships. What do we do at this point? Well, at this point, we take a look at what the enemy actually has. So that's tooltip number nine. Oh, look at that. Their economy is at minus 420. Sure, they have a reasonable amount of alloys, plus 200 a month. But considering we took their capital world, their ability of actually producing any alloys has been reduced significantly. They have nano alloy plants producing about 50 alloys a month. And that right there should not be underestimated on how strong that is. Being able to find the enemy's ability to produce is incredibly good. For instance, they've got production plants here with crystalline uh, crystals and all that stuff. We've taken this world as well, and now there's a station there. At this point, we can just jump around. They don't have any jump drive, so we could just say, okay, um, how about we initiate a jump to a new location and then just take it from there? So we're just here right now. So this fight is going to be over very quickly because there's a bunch of battleships there and there's nothing they can do about it. 102. We just basically reinforced this fleet uh, in no time whatsoever. Considering we already had a ton of alloys, we can basically do whatever the hell we want. And at the same time, we have not used our main assets whatsoever. They are still sitting back at home, slowly being upgraded. Or the fleet is currently upgraded to a certain extent. Uh, it looks looking pretty good here. Same thing with some of these other fleets. They are looking pretty good in terms of upgrades and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, at this point, we could start thinking about 
moving in to reinforce the front line. And then the enemy will have to pull their fleets off in towards another direction. In combination with not being able to reinforce any of their uh, any of their ships, because we have effectively taken all their star bases away. Their inability of buying new resources, because here's another trick that I will show you. Let's go to uh, the alloys here. Let's just buy a couple. Why are we buying a couple? Because this way we are artificially inflating the economy of the galaxy. We know that the enemy needs certain resources, so we could just dump, for instance, crystals on the market. Let's just dump all of our strategic resources on the market, get more money, uh, moats as well, dump them all on the market. It's worth almost nothing now. Buy more alloys, inflate the alloy market, and they will not be able to get any alloys for their money. That, in combination with not having any production facilities, basically means... The enemy is crippled before the big fleet fight has already happened. And the big fleet fight is going to happen, but because we've been refitting, it's going to be in our favor. So yeah, there you have it. Tactical warfare, behind enemy lines, economical warfare. These are all super vi uh, viable and should not be overlooked when you're going up against an enemy that is relatively on par with yourself. Uh, being able to abuse jump drives is incredibly powerful, should not be overlooked. Go after enemies uh, production centers before you do anything else. Go for skirmish warfare. If the enemy has nothing but battleships, just throw a million corvettes at them. They will never be able to hit anything. Countering, countering, countering. Uh, it's all about being able to understand where the enemy is, what their capabilities are, and countering accordingly. Tall empires? Easily. Easily uh, crush all their alloy producing facilities, as well as the economy, at the same time. They will never be able to keep up with anything, because they're going to lose all their ships. The enemy fleet is coming. They are going to need to buy alloys. And all of a sudden they realize that the alloys cost a million bucks per unit. And then they're broke. At minus 1,000 energy a month. And then the empire collapses. And there you go. But yeah, let's just quickly recap. If you're going to go to war with an, uh, with an enemy and you have jump drives and you're in a fairly late game and the enemy is fairly pretty much on par with you in terms of firepower because they've spec'd their ships specifically against you, don't underest your uh, underestimate your ability to do something else. You don't need to slam 25,000 battleships into each other in order to uh, uh, attain victory. Is that, pra is that possible? Sure. Is it practical? Maybe. Is it economically feasible not really be careful about what you do your resources are limited use your jump drives go behind enemy lines land your armies there keep them there become a huge pain in the ass we're gonna wrap it up here if you have any other ideas regarding uh, this particular strategy and you want to uh, have a bit of a discussion down in the comments below i'm all up for it i'm always uh, always here reading everything you're saying yes i do read every single comment and uh, yeah tactical warfare Especially against uh, human players. Extremely annoying. Use those Corvettes. Be fast. Don't get gouted into a massive battle sh a battleship a slag off. Because it's not going to be good. Cripple them first. Then fight. Until next time. Take good care of yourselves. And as always. Meet Shudder.